century BC, the Roman Empire reaches its heyday. Likewise, the strongest empire in the east was China's Han Dynasty, stretching from the western coast of the Pacific Ocean to Central Asia, its culture profoundly influencing that of the east. Welcome to Xuzhou. We hope you enjoy your stay at the origin of Han Dynasty culture. Well, we're finally here in Xuzhou, a place filled with history, especially from the Han Dynasty over 2,000 years ago. So if you're a historical buff or just a commoner like myself, this is the place to be. Hey, we're here. Welcome to Travelogs History and Culture Series. I'm Yin, and let's check this place out. Xuzhou in northern Jiangsu province is one of China's best showcases of the art, archaeology, and history of the Han Dynasty. Many historical relics and traditions remain in Xuzhou from the Han Dynasty, 206 BC to 220 AD. Xuzhou used to be the territory of the Chu state in the Qin and Han Dynasties. It is located at the midpoint between Beijing and Shanghai. In the center of the city, on top of mountain, stands the famed horse-taming terrace. According to historical records, this is the site where the ancient Chinese hero Xiang Yu trained his soldiers and horses. At the age of 23, he led troops in battle against the Qin government and crowned himself king of the West Chu. In 207 BC, this Chinese aristocratic general led 30,000 troops to defeat 300,000 of the Qin's troops. After overthrowing the first dynasty to unify the empire, he took power, naming Pengcheng, today's Xuzhou, as the capital. The Xuzhou of the time became the anti-Qin insurrectionary army's base. Here, Horses and brave soldiers stand strong, and talented people gather in one remarkable city. The horse taming terrace became the legendary Xiang Yu's training ground, an energetic place where men crowded around. Today's horse taming terrace is a peaceful place. On the top of this mountain, no traces of a single horse, only stone tablets that remind us of its past. Horsey? Hey, horsey, come back! I think I've lost my horse. Well, actually, there shouldn't be any horses here today because this site is used only to commemorate Xiang Yu, the great general. However, this great general was defeated by another greater man. Who is he? We'll have to take a look. I gotta get my horse. Horse? Wait! Wait! <laughs> well, I didn't find my horse, but caught a bus to Pei County in the suburbs of Xuzhou. This is the hometown of the first emperor of the Han Dynasty, not Xiang Yu, but Liu Bang. Liu Bang was once a low-class official in Pei County, later joining the insurrections against the notorious Qin Dynasty and growing in power. He eventually became the main challenger to Xiang Yu's power. In 20 BC, Liu Bang finally defeats Xiang Yu uniting China and establishing the Han Dynasty. And in order to commemorate his achievements, the Chinese people constructed the Temple of Liu Bang, Han Hun Palace, and so on. From these structures, we can sense the simplicity of its style and the prevalence of terraces. People believe these terraces would bring them closer to the deities, allowing them to communicate with the heavens. The Ode to the Wind Terrace was the location where Liu Bang celebrated his victory. During the merriment, he left the world with Ode to the Wind, 
expressing the heroism of a king who performed meritorious deeds. Martial arts is also reflected in stone sculptures. Images like this were a popular tomb decoration in the Han Dynasty. And 2,000 years later, the stones show us the lives of people in the past. The simple pictures on the stone are similar to comic book pictures. This carving shows four people meeting, walking in line, fighting, and bidding farewell to each other. Here, the man is enjoying time at home with his wife and child. What is going on in the kitchen here? Aha, uh -huh, it seems barbecue had already sizzled taste buds 2,000 years ago. Hmm, let's see what else they have around here. New artistic techniques were also introduced. See how this man has two noses? Well, it's a profile and front view that hint at the movement of the face. In this stone sculpture, the artists use different ways to display the strength of these mighty men, carrying livestock and heavy tools. What a creative way of showing the strength of these mighty, mighty men. And what about this creature with a snake's body and human heads? It's Fu Xi Nu Wa, the legendary Chinese father and mother. They're comparable to the West Adam and Eve. These stone inscriptions are from the Han Dynasty, and they tell little stories. For instance, the soldiers here are riding on their horses to get into town. And the local residents are cooking and getting water and going about their daily lives. But did you know that these inscriptions are found within the tombs? The emperors wanted to take these depictions of daily life into their underground resting world their final resting place. Down here. Here lies the underground tomb of one of the Chu princes and his wife. The Guishan tomb is over 700 square meters, with an area of over 2,600 cubic meters. The construction of the tomb required hollowing out of an entire mountain, and the two entrances were dug from two opposite directions, joining in the middle of the hill. It's quite mysterious how craftsmen of the Han Dynasty constructed this tomb. According to experts, a project of this scale required 300 craftsmen to work over a period of 10 years. but. This tomb does not have the capacity to hold 300 workers at the same time. How did the Chu King solve these problems? More amazing, the tomb of the King and Queen have two separate entrances, with a distance of 19 meters between the two paths, separated by 20 degrees. If we extend the path to the west, the meeting point is Xi'an, the capital at the time, and 1,000 kilometers away. How were they able to keep the two paths on the same horizontal plane is a puzzle that we still can't explain. In this meticulous project, the door between the king and queen's chamber is irregular. If this was a miscalculation, how come there were no errors with the other chambers? Questions upon questions appear, and all we are left with 
are the mystery and wonder towards the craftiness of the ancient people. Suzhou was home to a succession of the Han Dynasty's most important princes and lords. Living in luxury during their lifetime, they hoped to enter the afterlife in splendor. They constructed tombs around the city and had them adorned with treasures. These underground tomb complexes are now open to tourists, and their treasures are displayed in the archaeological museum. Suzhou has a strong culture of tombs. Through tombs and the objects we find in them, we learn about the customs and lifestyles of the past. Located at the foot of the Lion Mountains lies the Suzhou Museum of Terracotta Warriors and Horses of Han Dynasty. Terracotta warriors in Chinese literally means military servants, and they serve to guard the tombs of kings and lords in their afterlife. These figurines were rediscovered in 1984 and have been on display in their original place since 1985. These 3,000 figures stand up to 40 centimeters tall. They are all dressed in long skirts and leg protectors. These soldiers are smaller than the perhaps more famous ones in Xi'an, but if you look carefully, they are crafted just as meticulously. They stand in attention in battle formation in the six pits, with hands out ready for combat. These guys are a lot smaller than I had expected. I'd say they're only maybe the size of my forearm. But you know what they say, the strength comes in numbers, and there are a few hundred of these terracotta warriors all lined up until the back. And if you look carefully,